the idea for this project first came about when I met up with uh, Professor Elizabeth Post and uh, Professor Karen Keough. Uh, we were at a conference together. Um, we started discussing our backgrounds and I started telling them about my experience in law enforcement back in Arkansas. And I spent my last few years working in criminal investigations. I was a part-time officer there. And uh, we had some incidents that occurred in the county where, to make a long story short, we had some kids, and we we're talking junior high school age kids, that were literally one text message away from meeting up with someone they had met online. And that started me developing some uh, talks that I would give to people about cybersecurity for children. I relayed this information years later when I came to Ferris to Professors Post and Keough. And one of the things that as we were talking about it, we identified that we were missing a key demographic. We were missing elementary school students who were first coming into social media, getting their first mobile devices, and we needed a way to instill in them a sense of behavior or a type of behavior that would help protect them against cyber predators. And we couldn't do it the way we might do with a high school student or an adult with talks and PowerPoints. We needed to do it in an amusing way and came up with the idea, let's do an animated short. And so I proposed this to Professor Post. She had her social work students work on a script. I took a look at this script and I said, this is good. This is not like anything that's out there today. We have to produce this. Went to Paul Quant because I needed someone to do the, uh, the musical scores and background music. He suggested that I team up with uh, Dwayne Wheat and you guys over there uh, in your production company for doing that. Um, then we had the theater people who assisted us in getting some actors for the voiceovers. Uh, and what we ended up with is something that has really been designed by students, written by students, acted by students, um, that we think is really going to have be able to reach those elementary school age kids and start to give them a sense of some of the dangers on the internet but not doing it in the way we would an adult. Alright, so this is the sequence that starts the conversation. Hi, do you like playing this game? Yes, do you? Yeah, my name is Riley. I'm in the fifth grade. What's your name? My name is Alex. Hira had this you know, vision you know, of reaching the kids through animation. And what I liked about this conversation here, kind of back to that sitcom era where they would do a, a diagonal split screen, mm -hmm. um, I think it allows you to see both aspects. Right, so we kind of want to see both characters on the screen at the same time. And then we kind of cut between the two, but then we also throw in that split screen segment that you're talking about. So uh, that's one thing that we're, we're looking at doing right here. So we start off wide, yeah. wide, close up, close up. At what point do you feel that the split screen would be effective? Be effective? Once we establish them, I think it would be going back and forth between the split and the close up. You know, we don't have to do this really fast. Mm -hmm. But I don't want it, you know, because our age group is younger, I want to be able to have them changing every three to five seconds. I think much longer to than that. To keep their attention. You know, because even, you know, even adults want things to go a little quicker. Or maybe what we could do is kind of have them come in like this. Sure. Or something. Or slide in, slide in. I, I would like slide to. Slide in, left, slide in, right. At least the first time. You know, right. I don't want to overdo it. But right, kind of establishing that split screen perspective. And again, we're talking about changing it up yeah. to keep their attention. It's kind of a 60s sitcom yeah, is what they used to really, do way back in. <laughs> I mean, when you look at just the dialogue itself, it's pretty basic. Right. You know, there's just conversation between the two of them. But the things that we could do to make it more interesting, like you're saying, is to have the split screen, have it animated. in. yes. Having that close-up shot, having that wide shot of them in the room, these are all things that kind of help set the mood. The the neat thing, if we went with that, if it just kind of slid, I don't think we want it to slide. I think we want it to come together. Yeah, because it's got to be fairly quick. Paul and his team might do a little, you know, just a little sound effect of that matching right. how it how it comes together. Yeah, those are all the little elements that are really going to tie this all together. I think because of the age group, we got to think young. We got to think. You oh, know, yeah. And I and I know with what Paul and and, and they're going to do there, everything's going to kind of resemble a younger kid's cartoon. 
Yeah. Um, and you know, got the movements and the and characters, the, and the silly and, sound effects that you know, yeah. you know, the boings and the you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> swishes. And... Hopefully, it doesn't get as cheesy as the old Batman movies right. or the the early Batman <laughs> series. Right. Uh, but the idea that because of the age group, you know, these characters are aimed at them, and I think that we're on we're on the right track. So, um, yeah, you you've I got like this right now set. To, uh, as the two characters um, with the split screen, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm in fifth grade too. This game is so much fun. I love it. Me too. I'd rather play this than go to school. But no, this will this will be good. And then once we get this aspect of it together, then we're going to add in between each scene. Uh, there's some tips that we'll be adding in. Probably do a voiceover. Maybe go, like we discussed earlier, uh, we can go to one of the scenes, like maybe the outside of the house, mm -hmm. and we can give it, we can give it that, you know, out of focus look. Right. And we could, you know, have the, have the words come in as the narrator is, is, is speaking. Mm -hmm. Whatever that sound effect is, or the music change, will be consistent that way it'll keep the audience knowing oh there's a tip you know once you do it the first time right it changes and then you do it the second yeah, time maybe maybe we'll have like a light bulb pop up in the corner or something or a thought bubble or i don't know we'll have a theme we have to get into our uh eight-year-old self yeah and the one thing i love about this process this project Dwayne is it's it's kind of developing as we go right like we've got the script we've got the characters created now we created the, we created some of the scenes and now it's just a matter of putting those pieces together and sometimes it's it that's what I love the creativity that comes with that it's like oh I can add this effect over here or have this going on over here like with the snow in the, in, in the background mm -hmm. it's like as I'm putting this together and we brainstorm on what works 